Hey guys, I'm here with Amber. She is the founder of Ivy Hill PR. And Amber works with small and medium-sized businesses across New England that are looking for help with strategy and anything that is pertaining to content marketing, public relations, and video production. So Amber is a guru in all things PR and marketing. So I brought her in today to talk about something super impactful and something we're all talking about right now, which is the impact of AI. So I'm going to hand it over to Amber to talk about a few tips and tricks to figure out how AI impacts your brand through PR and visuals and what do you do about it? So welcome, Amber. Excited to yeah. chat with you. Yes, thank you. Here, you can do that line again because I screwed that That's up. All right. No, I, I tripped over your line. Oh, no, you're fine. I don't know how to edit this, so it's not all one concise little thing. Oh, dude, I can help you. I'm planning on sending it to someone in India. No, I literally just cut together a video about how to use CapCut. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. And how to edit it on your, like, yeah. I'd rather send it to somebody and be like, I don't want to do it. Well, then perfect. But um, yeah. So to answer your question, AI. So what I want, <laughs> what I want to do for a second is just let the feeling parade go by when I say those two letters together because there's so many different thoughts and feelings around what it looks like to bring in artificial intelligence, things like chat GBT, mid journey, you know, what it looks like to optimize on things that we're not necessarily expected to be optimized on. You know, when people think automations or AI, you think, oh, I finally won't have to clean my room, I'll be able to do X, Y, Z, you know, it'll set email to go out for me, you know, like, that's what you think. You don't think, oh, somebody can cut together an entire movie now using AI if they want, but it's based off of somebody else's work. But also we don't know that, but also copyright, but also, but also, but also, you know, so, and it's just like, then you have compliance that rolls into it. And then you have people that, you know, putting on my crisis comms hat with Ivy Hill, because that's one of our specialties. You have people putting proprietary information into chat GPT, which then gets fed into the broader brain of chat GPT. So tell me why Samsung code is now part of the general vernacular when they paid millions of dollars to get that. People don't think about that. And those companies are not talking about it at all. <laughs> so, and then to top it all off, the cherry on top and what we're really curious about, which is a fun word for saying, we're a little nervous about it, but we're curious about what it'll look like as AI regulations start to clamp down. And what that looks like from a public perception standpoint is like, you're already seeing it people are getting called out for using AI ads or, you know, using AI writers even, you know, there's a big, you know, lots of scandals at different outlets right now, media outlets where you're pitching to somebody that doesn't exist, you know, and it's a, it's just the name, you know, and they're literally taking people's jobs and expertise and like reformatting it in a way that we haven't seen before. And there's not a lot of conversation being had. You're running into this Jurassic Park situation. Now, that is my feelings around it. So we let that parade go by. But I also have people on my team that are like, well, no, Amber, like this is a way where people that don't innately have that ability to paint that picture, but they have the idea in their head, they can start to visualize better. I'm seeing it help me streamline my storyboarding process with people. Or if I'm working on a brand logo, it kind of gives me a sense of, oh, here's something we could work with. But all of the but also as I laid out so and then the other part of it that we're really interested really really interested in and something that I big tip <laughs> for everybody <laughs> is the fact that spam filters are getting smarter regulations are definitely going to be cracking down especially with things like elections coming up and deep fakes and all those different things that skew people's ability to be media literate you know, to know, oh, that's just like, not actually a donkey pig horse, you know, that's just an AI generated image. That's not like, that article I just read about this new donkey pig horse is not true, you know, but it's becoming more and more difficult to do that. And the skills that we've used 
aren't applicable now. You know, you have all these different forms of technology that are changing. And it's definitely important as a business owner not to, you know, run underneath your desk and like duck and cover and hide. But it's definitely a, I need to know what this tool is about so I can be prepared because you never know. I mean, something could happen or, you know, I had somebody where my competitors putting out blogs left and right and I'm looking at them. I'm like, yeah, they dig below that metadata. They're going to find out that it's GPT through and through. That's going to kill their click through rate. It's not looking organic and Google knows, right? you know, because if you think about it too, from a PR standpoint, like, AI, all of that, that screws with Google and that screws with Google's reputation because if an AI article that's misinformation, so there's the difference between misinformation and disinformation. So misinformation is misleading. So it's like somebody telling you that, oh, you know, this particular, you know, I don't know, if you wear this color, your day is going to go better. You know, it's like, well, no, not necessarily. It's misleading. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be like, oh, you know, something bad's going to happen to you. That is disinformation. It's like lies that are meant to hurt people. So, or push a certain narrative. So, and aggressively so. So that's kind of the difference is that we're going to see that more and more. So it really benefits people to think about these things and really apply them to what it means to find out information, to share information, you know, goes back to our conversation about noise. You know, there's way more noise now because so much of the internet is bots mm-hmm. <laughs> generating things. So yeah, there's been a lot of, lot of feelings parades and heated discussions and not so heated discussions and, you know, ruminations about how AI will impact creatives and impact the broader world as we start moving forward and what it means for people's worth because you know frankly there are going to be jobs that are sped up because of things like ai what does it look like for those folks so as a business being able to speak to that artfully instead of just saying like hey look i busted out this vlog with chat gpt i got a backlink oh look it great what is that actually doing is it converting a lead like what's the purpose so yeah. So being able to discern that is a oh, top thing I'm working on with my clients right now when it comes to this area. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And I think one of the things that you said was Google knows. Mm-hmm. And I have this conversation with my clients constantly when it comes to photography. If you use stock imagery, Google knows. If you have a product rendering, Google knows that's not a real photograph. If you create an image via AI of a turtle, donkey, duck, whatever you said, (laughs) Google's going to know and it's going to hurt you in the long run. So for me, I'm always telling people, I'm like, fix it now. Remove that stock imagery now. And if you are using stock imagery, go back and look at how many downloads that image has. Because it's probably in the many, many, many thousands of downloads. So if that photo is being downloaded thousands of times, it's even easier for Google to say, oh, I've seen that here. I've seen that there. Oh, and I see it over there because all of the components are the same. So things people don't always think about. But no, Google knows. And I think that is a really harsh lesson a lot of people learn eventually. And I think it's going to be compounded by the fact that meta is dealing with a lot of you know heat about how they're going to approach election time because Mm -hmm. let's just be honest election is going to play into all of this ai public perception images you know people are going to have different types of information come their way how they figure out what is accurate that's something we need to explore as a society but you have places like meta where there are legislative bodies that are saying we need to keep this in check you need to have a tag that says this was created by ai if it is a sponsored ad you have to you have to let people know that this was created using ai and if you don't want to do that guess what we're going to be able to flag it now because we got the brains to figure out how to do that so you can't be sneaky you can't sneak around this no matter how hard you try the only way would be go old school with it take a 
picture of a printed out picture, I guess, you know, like, <laughs> which, why would you do that? So it's like, yeah. just, you know, to your point of fix it at the front end, you know, just to get it right. If you can't afford brand photography, that is like to the level that you want in your head, fine, but do something different. Don't lean on. I'm just going to say it and people are going to come at me in the comments. <sighs> AI feels like a potato chip tool. You know what I mean? Like it's accessible, but it dilutes everything and it is not healthy for you in the long run. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. a great analogy. Yeah. It just, that's what it feels like. It's, it's a, cause I have had situations where, so there's actually, I was very excited about it. I went to a conference and there's our, you know, media list platform that we use to kind of search for contacts quick and build media lists very quickly they introduced this new, you know, beta for, hey, you type in the mood, you type in, you know, the names, and you type in what you need to talk about in this press release, and when you need it by, and we'll put it all together. Let me tell you, that thing, like, and they warned me, they're like, it's in beta. I'm like, okay, gobbledygook. Mm, 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 mm. It took me longer to try to fix that thing (laughs) than if I had just written it myself. And people run into that time and time again. So that's when they become chat GPT experts to feed it. And it's like, yeah, that's just called critical thinking. Like, why don't we just go back to a good old fashioned outline? And if you get real stuck, that's where chat GPT can come in. But don't copy and paste something and expect it to take off because words are on a screen that align with your brand. Yeah. No, it's definitely huge. So you had to give the viewers three quick tips to make it so AI does not have a negative impact on their brand. What would those three quick tips be? Take a deep breath. You have feelings about AI, whether you like it or not. Get it out. Write it out. If you are frustrated because one of your friend's pieces of art got copy right restriction and you know Instagram took it down, but then you're seeing it on mid-journey, you know, we actually had a client who their photography that just won an award, they found it on an AI site. So it's like weird stuff like that. How does that make you feel? What does that feel like? Because we're not talking about that enough. And, you know, that's the first tip. The second tip is definitely read up on it and go through what does it mean to know something is fact and something is fiction? Because your audience is dealing with the same thing. And if you can respond in a way that's artful and intentional, and say, oh, we saw that health article too, guys. That was not written by an actual person. It was written by a company that is trying to do a sponsored ad. You just got to dig. You know, if you can speak to that, oh my gosh. Like, it's the equivalent of, like, being out at a networking event and walking up to somebody and being like, there's lipstick on your front tooth. Wipe it off while you can. You know? Like, that's the feeling that people get. It's like, oh my god, thank you. I almost shared that. That would have been mortifying. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. that's what people want. So help yeah. people through that and help yourself through that by learning. And yeah. then the third tip is just kind of going back to what we've been talking about. You know, things speed up for a reason, but it comes at a cost. So mm-hmm. just know that if you're going to use this tool, that's great. But you can use a jackhammer to try and fix a sink. Let me know how the results go on that. You know? Yep. <laughs> Probably not so. very not very well. It depends. It all depends on the on what you're trying to do and the timeline you have to do it in. Because like I was saying, sometimes it takes longer to fix some of the stuff that cranks out from AI. Yep, for sure. But yeah, thank you so much for all of that information. A big part is just educating. And I hope that anyone watching this finds some massive value out of these different tips and just getting people to think about it in a different way instead of always just taking the easy route. So thank you, Amber, for chatting with me a little bit about this today. And is there any way people can get in touch with you if they want to learn more? Absolutely. Yeah. You can always send us a DM. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Ivy Hill PR. And if you really want to dive deep and see some of like, you know, all the thoughts that we're talking about. IvyHillPR.com is the place to go. We got videos on there, resources, blogs. We talk about everything. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.